chemistry lecture number 11, changes in matter. Uh, this lecture will deal with uh, concepts and definitions, so you need to be able to uh, understand the concepts and the definitions and to uh, give examples of the concepts and definitions. All right, well, what's a physical change? A physical change is a, a physical property of the matter changes, but the matter is still made of the same material. For example, tearing a piece of paper into tiny pieces. The paper has physically changed, but we still have paper. So if I take some paper and I tear it up, the paper has physically changed, but uh, it's still paper. So that's a physical change. On the other hand, if we light a piece of paper on fire, we see it change, but the paper is no longer paper. Uh, the paper has changed into another type of material, so it is not a physical change. Uh, I would light a piece of paper uh, for the camera here, but smoke is not good for computer equipment, so I'm not doing that. There's my paper, and there are my flames, and see how the paper's uh, turning black. Anyway, lighting a piece of paper on fire is not a physical change, uh, because the paper changes into another substance. All right. Um, changes in the states of physical states of matter is a physical change. Uh, for example, if an ice cube melts, it changes from a solid to a liquid. And then if the liquid water is heated until it turns into steam, it has turned from a liquid into a gas. But in all three states of matter, the material is still H2O. So, solid, liquid, gas, those are the three states of matter. If you take an ice cube and add heat, you turn it into water. Add more heat, you turn it into steam. But no matter the different states of matter, it's still water. So this is a physical change. It's changed its uh, physical properties, but it's still the same material. Um, after the uh, ice has been converted into water and then steam, it's possible to convert the steam back into ice by removing the heat. So now we have steam, and if I remove the heat, I'll turn it into water, and then if I cool it and remove the heat again, I'll turn the water into ice, which is now a solid. Um, so this is a Another physical change. And the conversion of ice into steam is a reversible physical change since the end product can be converted back into the starting product. So we started with ice, heated it and turned it into water, and then heated the water and turned it into steam, and then we reversed the process. We removed the heat, changed it all back into what we started with. So it's a reversible physical change. Now, on the other hand, uh, if a piece of paper is torn into tiny pieces, the pieces won't reattach themselves. Thus, uh, tearing a piece of paper is called an irreversible physical change. So, I have uh, have my paper and I've torn it up, I've made a change, and then I'll put it into this little container here and I'll shake it and shake it and shake it, but no matter how much I shake it, it doesn't spontaneously reform back into the same physical chain state. So, uh, it's a uh, irreversible physical change. Mm -hmm. A chemical change is where uh, elements or compounds react to form a new substance. And a chemical reaction is where a chemical change is a chemical change where you start with one thing, which we call the reactants, and end up with another thing, a uh, product. For example, if you take a nail which is made of iron and leave it outside, it will react with the oxygen in the air, and the iron and the oxygen actually combine to form that orange stuff called uh, rust. Um, another type of a chemical reaction is if you take water and pass electricity through it, you can separate it into hydrogen gas and oxygen gas. And I have kind of a neat little picture of uh, that right here. So this is a battery and this is a beaker filled with water with two test tubes inverted in it. These wires here are connected to the battery and electricity uh, flows through the wires. And if I lift this up, maybe you can see this a little bit better. Yeah, you see these little speckles right here? These are bubbles that are coming off of the wires here. See, these little white stream there, those are a stream of bubbles. Well, those bubbles are uh, gases being produced as electricity goes through. And as the electricity passes through right here, um, oxygen gas is being made. And right here, uh, the electricity is causing hydrogen gas to be made. Right, but in any case, you're starting with uh, water and you're turning it into hydrogen gas and oxygen gas. You're starting with one material and you're ending up with two new substances. Signs of a chemical change. So how do you know when a chemical change has occurred? Well, if you see any of the following, a chemical change might have occurred. 
And the example I like to use is burning a piece of paper. When you burn a piece of paper, how do you know that that's a chemical change? Well, what are the things you see when a piece of paper burns? Well, one of the things you see is flames. So if you see or notice heat being generated, a chemical change might be occurring. Uh, what happens to the paper? Uh, the paper also turns black. So if you see a color change, that is also evidence that a chemical change may have occurred. Um, what else do you see when paper burns? You see smoke or the production of a gas. So if a gas is being produced, um, that's evidence of a uh, chemical change. And in the previous example of the uh, water here, this is uh, evidence of a chemical change. You see bubbles or gas is being made. And then the fourth uh, type of evidence that a chemical change has occurred is a precipitate forms. What the heck is a precipitate? Well, a precipitate is a solid that suddenly appears in a liquid. And precipitates are sometimes appear when liquids are mixed. Uh, it usually means that the contents of uh, the two liquids have reacted to form a new substance. So, <coughs> excuse me, precipitation often occurs when um, you have two liquids, each containing different chemicals, and you mix the liquids together, and then suddenly something solid appears. Now, I have a picture of something like that happening. This is on the cover of uh, my old college chemistry book. If you take a look, okay, yeah, you can sort of see that, okay. What's happening here is uh, this is a beaker, and it's filled with some uh, liquid that uh, has a chemical in it. And this beaker right here also has a chemical. And what's happening is that they're pouring the liquid into this liquid. And then when these two liquids make contact, the chemicals that are in the liquid are producing this cloudy stuff. Um, what's actually being made is some sort of lead uh, compound. All right, so this cloudy stuff here is the precipitate, the solid that's being formed. And what will eventually happen is the solid will settle down. There will just be this layer of uh, yellow powder uh, uh, dissolved. Well, not dissolved, but there will be a layer of uh, yellow powder at the bottom of the uh, beaker. So this is an example of precipitation. Now, the appearance of heat, color change, gas, or a precipitate means that a chemical change has probably occurred. However, uh, it's still possible that you're observing a physical change. Uh, for example, if you dissolve salt uh, into water, uh, the salt disappears, but then you can make the salt reappear. And you might think of that as a chemical change, but in reality, the salt is still the salt before you dissolve it into the water and the water is still the water afterwards. So, um, if I pour, you know, salt into H2O, um, the salt uh, disappears and then you can uh, evaporate the water. So you have salt water. You add heat and then Afterward, you see this pile of salt. You say, oh, you know, that's a change. We see a color change. Suddenly this white stuff appears. Well, it's not really a chemical change. The salt was uh, still salt before you evaporated the water, and the salt is still salt after you evaporated the water. I can show you something else. Um, this is a gadget that has sodium acetate dissolved in water, and it's enclosed in this little uh, plastic thing here. So. Uh, the sodium acetate is dissolved in here, and I can make the sodium acetate appear. And so that would be a color change. But even though that's a color change, that doesn't necessarily mean that a chemical change is occurring, because the sodium acetate uh, in here is still sodium acetate before you see it, and it'll be sodium acetate after you see it in white solid form. Right now, it's in a different physical state. It's in a dissolved form. All right, this may not work, but let's give it a try. So I'll just flex this little disc in here. Yay, it's working, okay. Ta-da. So you're seeing a precipitate forming, and you're seeing a color change. Okay. <clears throat> and it's evidence that a chemical change might be occurring, 
but unfortunately in actuality this is just a physical change. The sodium acetate that was dissolved in there is just visible now. That's all. The sodium acetate has not changed into anything new. And in fact I can boil this and re-dissolve the sodium acetate back into the water. Again, no new substance is made, just the sodium acetate in the water um, or the sodium acetate went from a dissolved physical state to a uh, solid physical state. The water is still water, the sodium acetate is still sodium acetate, and after I boil it, we'll still have water and sodium acetate. <clears throat> All right, for a PDF transcript of this lecture, uh, go to www.richardlouis.com. This has been chemistry lecture number 11, Changes in Matter.